Big up Cassie. So, um, Cassie released a statement just now regarding everything that occurred and the videos that have been shared online. Um, and just, you know, the ordeal she's been going through. She stayed, she's been quite stoic and steadfast and quiet regarding the whole thing. I'm assuming most of it has to do with the NDA and also because it's super painful and also what the fuck can you say to make it feel better? It's just one of those things you kind of have to just get through, you know? So, um, big up Cassie for kind of maintaining her peace, not engaging in all the discourse online. I'm sure she's seen it and just kind of keeping quiet and focusing on her family and her friends, husband, all that good shit. Cause that's what's needed now, especially now that she's got the settlement money, you can kind of plan for the future and do some cool stuff and try and make the best of this. Try and make the best of the rest of your life. Basically, you've gone through that shitty thing. Now you can kind of grow into it. That's probably the only benefit of that occurring while she was so young. Because I remember that's what broke my heart when I read the story that I think that Diddy got, Diddy kind of jacked her from, um, what's his name, Ryan Leslie, when she was like 19 or something. So he basically was her first introduction into the industry at large. He gave her a lot of her first, like, so they were tied to the hip for a long time. So it makes sense why she stayed around for so long, even though abuse victims anyway, take, I think the average is like seven times until they actually leave. It made a lot of sense why she was around for so long. So she suffered for a long time as well. And at least the only silver lining from this is that it happened while she was very young. So you go through that sort of stuff young and it doesn't break you. It doesn't change how you view love and how you view relationships. It kind of informs you and it clues you up and widens you up and makes you kind of street smart very quickly. And you've also got a lot of time to repair that damage, you know? So with this settlement money, you'd assume she's probably got time to do what she needs to do and kind of make the best of this um, shitty situation. So she finally broke her silence and put out a statement on Instagram. Cassie said the following. Thank you all for the love and support from my family, friends, strangers, and those I have yet to meet. The outpouring of love has created a space for my young self to settle and feel safe now. But this is only the beginning. Domestic violence is the issue. It broke me down to somebody I never thought I would become. With a lot of hard work, I'm better today, but I will always be recovering from my past. Thank you to everyone that has taken the time to take... Why, why can't I read that properly? Thank you to everyone that has taken the time to take this matter seriously. My only ask is that everyone open your heart to believing victims the first time. It takes a lot of heart to tell the truth out of a situation that you are powerless in. I offer my hand to those that are still living in fear. Reach out to your people. Don't cut them off. No one should carry this weight alone. This healing journey is never ending, but this support means everything to me. Thank you. Love always, Cassie. So big up to Cassie. Much support, much love to her. Thoughts and prayers with her. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure she's got the right people around her. She's going to keep going on. And you think as well, for someone, for someone, for that to happen to you so young and for you not to crash out, is a sign that you're mentally a lot stronger than people realize. And you've also got the right people around you. So I think she'll be cool. But I was thinking a lot more about this because I've still yet to kind of really process the gravity of this situation. But then it all kind of clicked to me the other day when I was listening to the Love Album again. And I was like, oh my God, bro. This guy, Diddy, who I legitimately looked up to when I was growing up, who I saw as like an icon, a beacon, a kind of pillar a symbol right of like what you can achieve in the corporate world in you know in, in, in the commercial world in the business world right without actually having the requisite let's say talent to do the thing you're doing because i think he was like the first sort of like proper mainstream multi-hyphenate right slash 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 he did so many things but he basically started from being an intern at a record label the journey that we've all kind of walked down right we've had the same sort of journey all of us out there trying to work in a creative field entertainment field it always starts with doing some jobs for free and usually it can feel a little bit you know um it can feel a little bit pointless it can sometimes feel like you're not going anywhere it can feel like a waste of time it can feel maybe exploitative but diddy was proof that if you stick the course if you know what you're doing if you've got a bit of hard work effort if you've got a bit of um, work ethic about you if you've got a, gr a grand vision if you execute at the highest levels you can get there or if you execute sorry, at every level that you're at, you can obviously get there. And I saw Diddy as those type of people because I remember watching, he was the first type of person that I kind of watched a lot of documentaries on on YouTube. I'd watched documentaries about his um, label, Sean John. I worked the documentaries about um, Bad Boy, documentaries about when he was running around with um, um, Biggie when he was alive. I'd watched documentaries on him trying to launch Revolt, documentaries on him when he first signed to Rock. So I was very well-versed, very plugged in, very aware of Diddy from a producer to a musician, to an artist, to a rapper, to whatever. Loved all of it. And I also loved the reinventions. Back then, I don't know if you remember, Diddy's reinventions were looked at as a good thing because it seemed like every every decade he would reinvent himself, either with a new name or a new aesthetic. 
white suits, black suits, pimp wear, sports wear, street. Like, he would always kind of reinvent himself. And I was always seen as like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. He's, even though he's older, he's always keeping up with the times without losing his essence of himself. But it's so heartbreaking to know the entire time he was doing that, especially at his peak, he was beating a young Cassie black and blue. And it's even worse when you actually rewatch the video that I did the other day. If you rewatch the video, the really heartbreaking thing about that video is that if you look closely enough, you'll notice Cassie's got white fingernail polish on. And if you remember the original lawsuit, they said part of the freak off attire, the freak off way of life, was that Diddy demanded these girls to wear white um, nail polish and obviously um, what you know on the feet and on the hands. That's what they had to do. He liked them to look a certain way. So that was in the midst of a freak off. Number one. Number two. If you notice watching that video, she doesn't have any shoes on. When she leaves that hotel room, she has no shoes on. And the story allegedly goes. I think in the lawsuit it says Diddy punched her in the face in the room sometime. She got a black eye. And she was, that was like her final straw. Okay, I'm leaving the guy. But she was so scared to wake him up and to kind of get his wrath that she must have removed her shoes in the room so she could sneak out quietly because he was sleeping. But unfortunately, he still heard her. And as you can see, when he, when she gets to the hotel, when she gets to the, to the lift, she presses the number and you can almost see from body language, she's almost kind of, she feels safe. She's like, oh, finally, the lift's coming. But little does she know that Diddy's running down the, the, the hallway and while she's at the lift, She's also putting on her socks. So it's obviously intentional. She obviously took off her socks and her shoes in the room to try and creep out the room as quietly as possible. She felt safe the moment she pressed the down button on the lift. But little did she know, in like one second, Diddy will be behind her, kicking and punching her while she's on the floor or kicking her and throwing shit at her. And then when you also watch the beating, it's so dismissed. It's so like... It's so brutal. It's so dehumanizing. Because somebody said the other day, oh, it looks like it's kicking a dog. You wouldn't even do that to a dog. You would never kick your dog like that. Like, that's pure disgust and anger and contempt that he has. Especially the bit where he kind of pushes her into a corner and then sits on a chair in that kind of cocky, like, diddy pose with his legs split. And then he throws a vase at her. Because in some psycho brain, you know, rationalization, maybe you could say the first pull at the hotel lift door is a moment of rage you're running out of the room you're fucking feeling aggrieved and let's say you agree because sharp from no jumper had a fucking crazy opinion sharp and no jumper was like oh he felt like from his experience that looked like something like cassie had stolen something from him like as if diddy was pissed off that she stole something and then he was running down it's like bro it doesn't matter if she stole something you don't fucking beat a woman like that that's not what happens you know what i mean anyway that was sharp's opinion but even if you think that cool let's rationalize it and say that first sort of like violent exchange was quote-unquote justified if that's the case when she's on the floor lying lying in a what i think called in a prone position she's almost playing dead then what then i think you're going too far because she's clearly not putting up a fight she's not talking back at you because she looks like she's literally trying to cover her face we can't hear the audio but she seems kind of quiet at one point she seems like she went out she it, it seems like when you hear on the floor she kind of went out of consciousness but i'm not too sure if she's just kind of trying to play dead so you've, you've dominated her, you've shown that you're more powerful, more strong, and you still kick, you still throw a vase at your head. Now you're a monster, bro. You deserve to be under the jail. And that's the really distressing, heartbreaking shit about it is that as, a fac as an actual fan, even though I'm somebody that can separate the art from the artist, when I see shit like that, I don't think I can. I'm, I swear to God, I really don't think I can. Because the R. Kelly thing, it didn't really matter because I'm, I'm not really listening to R. Kelly like that anyway. You know what I mean? I, I, I wasn't really, he wasn't really my guy. Usher was mostly my guy, even though they're not the same age range. If I had to compare one, I think I, I was more of an Usher kid than I was an R. Kelly kid. So when the R. Kelly got cancelled, I didn't really, didn't really give a fuck. It didn't really affect my day to day. But the Diddy thing has, I'm not going to lie, because it's made, it's made it hard to listen to that Love Album. I said before, Love Album was literally the album of the year and maybe one of his best works ever which makes sense as well because the worst people sometimes create the best art. They pour that fucking toxic negativity, darkness, whatever into their fucking music and sometimes it fucking bangs. But I don't even think I can listen to the guy now anymore knowing that that's how he gets down behind the scenes. Because think about it, that's a hotel and he did that. Imagine what he was doing behind the scenes that we didn't see. Imagine what Cassie was going through behind closed doors. And there's videos. There's actually videos out there people have been able to put together. There's videos that we've seen online, allegedly, 
showing Cassie like four days after that event. And they, and again, this is at the time when they were like Bonnie and Clyde type of thing. Everywhere Diddy went, they asked about Cassie. Everywhere Cassie went, they asked about Diddy. No, and the interviewer has no idea, didn't know at the time, that for four days before that, Diddy was fucking beaten on the floor. And they're asking her about Diddy. And she's like, as a pro, her fucking professional face on, you can't even tell there's an issue. Answering questions about him, how loving they are, what they do together as a couple, why they're soulmates, all this malarkey. And, and we have no idea that behind the scenes, she's getting beaten up by this man. So it's really impossible for me to look at the guy the same again. It really is. I can't separate the art from the artist anymore because I can't support or get down with somebody that will be up, that will hit women in the first place. And number one, especially women that you love in that kind of way, that's disgusting. But it also shows to me that there's other nefarious things going on behind the scenes. So now the whole lawsuit, I believe it. I believe everything in the lawsuit now. Even though I, I believed it anyway, I believed exactly what will happen to, to, to Cassie. The other stuff with Meek Mill, maybe you could be a little bit like, eh, whatever, the little rod shit. But the stuff that came in Cassie's lawsuit was fairly obvious to say that was true. The people out there that were waiting for the video evidence, you're insane. This woman was with, was with Diddy for a long time. They were very public about their relationship. Like, if anybody knows where the body's buried, it's fucking Cassie. So the fact that people were debating with what her intentions, it's like, bro, she's not even, she'd never even spoken about the guy in public, I think, since they're broken up. Why would she suddenly want to clout chase? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Usually people clout chase in the moment of the fucking breakup. You get broken up, it gets announced on the blogs, you capitalize in it, you clout, you clout chase, you grift, you do whatever needs to be done. She disappeared, married a civilian, like a model guy, like just a regular dude, had a family, just completely went away. I don't think that's clout chasing. I think that's somebody finally having the courage to speak up and say something and put an end to that abuse because he's he was still doing it till this day. Don't believe, you know, Young Miami, maybe she wasn't getting beaten up, but they were going through the same shit. Young Miami had the fucking white nail polish. Young Miami allegedly, according to Little Rod, was fucking smuggling pink, pink cocaine around for fucking Diddy. Freak ups were still happening to this day. So if Cassie never spoke up, freak ups freak ups would have still been occurring. Imagine that. Think about that for a minute. If Cassie wasn't, if Cassie didn't file that lawsuit, freak ups would have still applied. But all this to say, I saw this video online. And I'm not going to lie, this video in particular made me think that, oh my God, this motherfucker is a legit animal. Look at this video from 2009. Big up, it's a vibe, aka Sound on Twitter for posting this. Um, the uh, He's got a channel called Club Ambition that does really good music video reactions and sorry, album reactions and shit. So I'm sure you know who the guy is. So check him out. He's really cool. He posted this clip of Diddy from 2009 on The Ellen Show. And in this particular clip, this is during the aftermath of Rihanna and Chris Brown when the when the picture of Rihanna and her injuries went viral, right? When Chris Brown allegedly, ass not allegedly assaulted her in the car, I think on the way back from some award ceremony somewhere when they were dating. And obviously that was a big deal. It kind of got Chris Brown cancelled. And, you know, it obviously um, was a bad look for Rihanna too because she got to look like the way she did. It was whatever. It kind of stirred a whole debate around domestic violence, domestic disputes. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. Bad times. Diddy was on the show, plans to be on the show anyway. But Ellen, obviously, you're a hip-hop person. You're a black guy. You're in the scene. You know both parties. So she kind of asked like an open-ended question about the situation. And look at how angrily, look at how visibly angry and annoyed Diddy is that he's been asked this question. Again, this is in the heat. And this is not like months after when you're a bit tired of the debate. This is in the heat of the moment. The event happened just a couple of days before and Ellen's just asking him the question, I think is a fairly fair question to kind of ask as a hip hop guy, as a black dude, as somebody that knows both parties. Hey, what do you think about the thing? And look at how angrily Diddy kind of replies and responds to fucking Ellen's question. He doesn't really seem happy in the slightest. I think this clip is very eye opening in showing you that maybe we should have known from the beginning that Diddy behind the scenes was fucking up Cassie hard for me and, and I don't believe in judgment either but I don't want any girl out there thinking it's okay to go back to a guy who hit her I yeah, don't want yeah, any girl I, to I, think I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think and I don't mean to put you no, in no, that no, 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 but you are, you are putting me in it so, so I'm going to speak on it I okay. don't think it's I don't think that it's um, right for anybody to hit anybody mm -hmm. at the end of the day mm -hmm. Ellen DeGeneres said very clearly there I don't want any little girl out there to feel like it's okay for a guy to hit you and you to go back to them. Because I think that also was a time when Rihanna was literally obsessed with Chris Brown, as most girls were around the world. He was the legit, he's still a heartthrob now, but back then he was even more so. 
So she was basically just being, you know, fearful that Rihanna would go back to Chris Brown, which I think she did for a bit and then ended up breaking up again. Diddy immediately went on the defensive. No, no, you are. I don't mean to put you in it. No, no, you are putting me in it, though. He was pissed off he'd be even being asked a fucking question. Let's play it for one more time for the beginning. It's a fucking odd, odd response to a very, I think, generic, open-ended question. Hard for me, and, and I don't believe in judgment either, but I, I don't want any girl out there thinking it's okay to go back to a guy who hit her. Yeah, I don't want yeah, any girl I, to think I, I don't, that. I don't, I don't, I don't think... But you are you are putting me in it, so, so I'm gonna speak on it. Okay. I don't think it's I don't think that it's um, right for anybody to hit anybody mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't think it's right, you know. I think that we all have to be honest with ourselves as adults, and and people have been in relationships, you know. We know sometimes those relationships get ugly, you know, and sometimes it doesn't come out into the forefront the way this one has come out. And it's a lot of stones being thrown, and we don't know exactly what's going on these are two young individuals we need to pray for them and we need to give certain support but you don't need to start just saying that you know something that you don't know you wasn't in that car i, was I wasn't in that car and it isn't right for him to put his hands on her or her to put his hands on him and we don't know what the problem is but we need to pray for them and we need to do things to support them and that's all i want to say about it i agree with Thank you. you i want to support them jesus look how mad he is Look at how, I, I honestly forgot. I remember watching this when it happened, but I forgot how angry and how visibly full of rage he looked during this whole entire segment. Now I understand, there is a part of it where you can kind of understand Diddy's frustration. You go on the Ellen show to promote whatever you want to promote, and then you're getting quote unquote ambushed about this topic that has nothing to do with you. I can understand why he could be annoyed in that regard. But because of the sense, because of the severity of the situation, because of how raw it is, because of how sensitive the topic is, in that moment, just play the fucking game. Domestic violence, bad. I abhor any guy that hits a woman. It's fucking not a man to me. It's disgusting to see that sort of stuff. It's heartbreaking. I send my thoughts and prayers out to fucking Rihanna. That's it. Done. Cue for fucking break. You come back and then you start fucking Harlem shaking. That's okay. But in the moment, he got annoyed. Like, And even Ellen tried to be like, I know I know, it's not your issue. Sorry for bringing this up. You could be like, no, it's okay. I completely understand why you're bringing up Ellen. Um, obviously, I wasn't there. I don't know these. I don't know much about what's going on. I've seen the pictures like everybody else. But it obviously broke my heart when I saw it. I've got two young... You can even do that whole thing. I hate that whole I've got daughters thing because it almost means as if if you didn't have daughters, you wouldn't understand that domestic violence bad like i don't really understand that kind of language or that kind of phrase um or that phraseology that people use out there but you can even run with that narrative oh i've got a mom i've got an auntie i love i've got a grandma i love i've got a daughter i love blah 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 but did he didn't so this was a sign from 2009 that this guy's been a bad fucking dude very bad because something in his spirit got triggered and this that goes back to the whole like whatever does whatever happens in the dark always comes to light which I remember used, I used to hate when my parents would say that to me back in the day because they almost, you know, you know, African parents, they, they almost say these type of things as like a, I almost say like as a threat, but almost like a way to keep you in line. <laughs> it's, um, my dad always be like, oh, I had a dream about you going out and something, but it's like, bro, nothing bad happened. You, you just don't want me to go outside. Just say you don't want me to go out. Ground me if you want, but don't, like, you had, so you had some vision that I got swallowed by a snake on the way there or a whale jumped out of the fucking central line and fucking ate me whole. Like, come on, not that deep. But to be fair to my parents, they were right on two things. And they're still right on two these two things. Nothing good happens after 9 p.m. <laughs> and what happens in the dark <laughs> will always come to light. And this is the proof of it. This guy's a billionaire. Top of the fucking food chain. Apex predator. When they say, um... When they say fucking, um, what's that term they use in fucking, in the manosphere? When they say high value male, Diddy's face would be on a definition of a high value male. He is the fucking capital H in high value male. And he has all the resources, all the enablers, all the dick suckers, all the clout chasers, all the, in, all the excuse makers, all the look the other wayers, all the head in the sanders to get away with murder, legitimate murder, if you believe some of the rumours and the conspiracy theories, Ooh, who killed Tupac, oh, who really killed Biggie, oh, who really killed Kimball, oh. if you really believe the stories, he could get away with absolute murder, but look what happened, eventually it had to be revealed, eventually it came to light, and the most unsuspecting person was the one that brought it to light, D dear old Cassie, little old, you know, quiet, meek, shy Cassie, me and you, 
she's the one that fucking said it's me and nothing. Yeah, I mean, she fucking got him the fuck out of here. So that's what I'm happy to see. But again, as a fan, it's been heartbreaking because you see somebody. You, you can separate the art and the artist, but somebody like a Diddy, he's all encompassing. You want you want to emulate the whole life, the whole lifestyle. You want so, it's somebody to aim to look up to. Like, oh my god, wow! You can be unapologetically black in these type of spaces. You can promote and push this certain aesthetic. You can have this certain taste level. You can be unabashedly like you know um, on it in terms of success and you know m money and wealth and cars and guilt. Like you can be this this what I like to envision like a quintessential idea of a playboy in that respect, right? It's kind of like in a weird way. I kind of maybe saw even Diddy like a like a straight version of Tom Ford. If that exists. Because Tom Ford, that's the thing with Tom Ford. He's like a real, like, designer's designer. Super smart businessman. Really dashing, handsome dude. But if you think about it, he's also kind of boring. Doesn't really party. He had He's, he's had a husband since, you know, early times. He's not really, I mean, he's he's not really that kind of like, but when you see Diddy was out to me, the kind of straight version of kind of Tom Ford. For the fashion, the movies, the music. The lifestyle, the, the fucking, you know, liquor, fragrances, the books, even Revolt. When Revolt first started, it was like, you know, ah, I want to fucking empower black people, have the first black network, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, look what it turned out to be. Look what it turned out to be. A, a fucking, a house built on fucking sand, a charade. And um, as Mo and Rory said, he's definitely a false idol. Um, we shouldn't obviously idol celebrities anyway. We should always just enjoy their art. I think this whole idea of putting celebrities on a fucking pedestal is null and void, especially because we don't know these people. We don't know how they are. We don't even know our own family members who do some fucking madness. So the fact that we can look at a fucking celebrity and be like, oh my God, you're so amazing. It's fucking bizarre. So um, um, it's for the good. Again, um, force and feelings go out to Cassie. Um, what an amazing and very well considered fucking um, statement she put out there. I love it. Um, and I hope she can have all the healing necessary and kind of go from there. So big up Cassie. Big up Cassie. Big up Cassie. Big up fucking Cassie.